Let's turn our Bibles to Book of Acts, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Look at two verses, verses 30 and 31. Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31. The title of the message is, Is It That Easy? Is It That Easy? Is It That Easy? Acts chapter 16, verse 30. The Bible, the Bible says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Passage is very famous. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Philippian jailer was in trouble. There was an earthquake, and there was event where prison doors are open, and Paul and Silas were amongst them. If they escaped and they were nowhere to be found, you know, he would have been killed. But he was shocked. They were still there. And when you look at verse 27, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. So he was in a dire, intense situation. OK, I'm the keeper of the prison, but all the prisoners in his mind, are gone. It's like, okay, I'm going to kill myself. Many of the unsaved and saved Christians may feel the same way. You may find yourself in an intense situation, very difficult situation, in a life-altering, life-threatening situation, in your you know, opinion, in your thoughts. And many people try to do what? They try to end it. Again, suicide is not just for unsaved people. Suicide is for saved people as well. Right. Yes. Devil will use many circumstances in a Christian's life to make him think right. that you should just call it quits. Yes. You have better thing waiting for you in heaven. You're no good here. Honestly, unless you're just Downright, downright backslidden, and you just gave up on your life, and you're constantly going to just sin, maybe it's better for you in heaven. However, every one of us, you and I, have a chance to do something for Lord Jesus Christ. Every day is new day. Yes, sir. You might have had the worst week. You might have had the worst day. You might have had the worst month, or right. this might have been your worst year so far until July 23rd, which wow. is today. But thanks be to God, always, you have new opportunity. Amen. This Philippian jailer was very distressed. He probably thought, you know what? Instead of me getting killed, instead of someone putting me in front of everybody and shame my whole family, I'm just going to kill myself. I'll just end it here. If you ever had those thoughts, you're not alone. Those thoughts were around for thousands of years. Yes. People, just normal people like you and I, sometimes think that, OK, you know, there's no way out. 
So I'm just going to call it quits. When those thoughts do come, don't think that they're coming from the Lord. Mm. It's coming from the devil. That's right. Yeah. And the devil's trying to entice you to keep up everything that's going on in your life. Yes. If you were to say, you know what? Life is too hard. I'm just going to end it right now. Who gets the most benefit? Think about it. Who will be most beneficial upon your death right now? The devil. Is that your mom? Is that your dad? They'll be heartbroken. Is that your wife? Is that your husband? Is that your children? Is it your coworker? I mean, is that the government? I mean, who will be most you know, beneficial? I mean, it's, you know the answer, as brother shouted out, devil will be very happy. Right. It's like, you have, I have one less you know, Bible-believing Christian to worry about. Right. You know, no more going out there street preaching, no more passing out and handing out tracts, no more being a testimony to others so that they can come to the knowledge of truth. Amen. So let's end it. As you can see, so this is type of situation this Philippian jailer was in. And don't think that, you know, that's not me. If it's not you right now, it will be you Mm. in the future. If Lord tarries, you know, your life is not going to be rosy all the time. There's going to be up and downs. There's going to be trials. And there's going to be a valley. In those moments, let's see what kind of answers can we get. Verse 28, in this case, but a Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. He received the answer that he desperately needed. Just when he was about to end his life, Apostle Paul cried out with a loud voice, stop, you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to kill yourself. We're all here. At that moment, imagine the emotions that Jailer went through. He was about to die. Literally, he was just about to kill himself and you know, just end it there. But when he heard that voice, I'm pretty sure he literally passed on from death to life. When you look at your Christian walk, when you look at your salvation, that's what happened. If the Lord did not show you enough grace and mercy, you and I could have been burning in hell right now. Yes. That's, you know, our eternal death in hell. However, the Lord gave you that lifeline. Amen. Someone cried out to you, Woo. right? That's good. We're all here. Amen. The Lord's like, I'm here. Amen. And then what happened? In verse 30, he knew Paul and Silas had something that he didn't have. Right. He goes, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> then Apostle Paul starts saying, you know, go to my seminar and listen to a whole week of program. Okay? Bring your credit card, bring a bunch of cash. He did not say that. Let's go through the tulip. Let's go through all the doctrines you know, before you can get saved. He did not say that. Right? You have to sign some forms, right? And then right there. He did not say that. He just said what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Is it that easy? Yes, it is. Salvation is that easy. Getting saved is that easy. Then what are you waiting for if you are not saved? Everybody wants easy things in their life. I mean, tell me, if you didn't have to, you know, labor eight hours in the sun, scorching sun in this humid, I mean, humid weather, you wouldn't do it. If your mom told you, if your daddy told you to go out there, you know, cut the lawn, you know, take out the weeds, right? If you didn't have to do it, you wouldn't do it because it's not that easy. If your boss gave you a difficult project or difficult assignment, 
You don't want to do it if you don't have to do it. Right. There are a lot of difficult, hard things in life. Yes. I mean, imagine if wife and husband fight. Reconciling can be very difficult. Yes. I mean, those married people, you would know. Amen. And don't tell me that we never fight. I mean, you're a liar. We do. Either you don't care about each other, <laughs> or you never care about each other enough to not have anything to fight about, or you're just denying yourself and denying the reality. <laughs> don't fight too much. <laughs> and you have children. If you were to ask children, they'll list so many things they say it's so hard to do. And they say so many things easy to do. Now, playing video games, it's easy for them. Right? Not washing up, it's easy for them. Not brushing their teeth, it's very easy for them. Not eating vegetable, it's easy for them. A lot of things are easy for them. However, washing up regularly, waking up early, going to school, obeying all the you know, parents' commandments, you know, lectures, you know, those are not that easy. So from little child to elderly person, you know what's easy and you know what's not easy. Oh, yes. But when it comes to salvation, Come on, it is that easy. Amen. Why do you wait? You know, everybody loves free stuff. Yeah. If you don't like free stuff, you're different. 99% of the population loves free stuff. Yes. If you ever go to any kind of event, you love to receive some goodie bags, right? Yes. Party favors. I mean, it might be junk, but you want to open it and see what's in it, and you start taking it out. Maybe they have 20 stuff, and maybe one or two is usable. And other 18, you know, you become a hoarder if you don't throw it away. Amen. But you like it. It's free. Yes. It was good. I mean, if you go to a market, there's always signs to entice you. Two for one, three for one. You buy two apple, you get two free. And you're like, oh, that's a great deal. You buy a pound of steak, and they say you get a free another pound. I mean, it's, whenever you receive it, it's free. I mean, if... Someone gives you free money, right. you'll be happy. Right? If someone gives you a free car without the tax problems, right? <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be happy. Right? A lot of times, you know, it's just a funny story, right? You know, there's talk shows everywhere. Oh, everybody gets a free car, right. but they don't realize that they have to pay for the tax of the car, right? But if you don't have to worry about taxes, you know, anything, and if someone gives you free stuff, you're happy. Yes. You're happy to receive it. Can you imagine your mortgage or your rent, wow. your, you know, you don't have to pay for it for six years. Wow. Wow. Uh, then you'll be happy. Yes. When it comes to salvation, though, mm-hmm. even though it's so easy, even though it's something that's so free, people don't want it. That just tells you the problem with, you know, human. Yes. But problem and root comes down to their heart. Yes. There was a guy named Kenneth Clark, known for his television series, Civilization. He lived and died as a lost man. He admitted, at least he was honest, he admitted in his autobiography that you know, while visiting a beautiful church, he had what he believed to be an overwhelming religious experience. My whole being, Clark wrote, was irradiated by a kind of heavenly joy far more intense than anything I had known before. But the gloom of grace, as he described it, created a problem. If he allowed himself to be influenced by it, he knew he would have to change. His family might think he had lost his mind. And maybe that intense joy will prove to be an illusion. So he concluded. And many, many, many lost people conclude like this. I was too deeply embedded in the world to change course. It's that easy. But however, if you are too deeply embedded in the world to change your course, it's going to be hard. Salvation, it is that easy. However, for most it's too deep. 
Isn't that funny? People don't want to think too deep many times because it hurts their brain. What was it? E equals MC squared? And do you want to explain to someone? If someone told you, hey, go home and study E equals MC squared, and by next Sunday, be able to explain it to everybody. Man, you're like, ah, I don't want to do that. Right? And people think that salvation is like E equals MC squared. They think that, okay, this person saying this, other person saying this, this is how I, I grew up. Okay, so how am I going to get all these things together? When the Bible clearly says in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, there. what does it say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So as you can see, even if you are too deeply embedded in the world, and you think that you can't change, but you can. It's just your heart. Amen. So think about where your heart is, especially if you're not safe, especially if you don't know where you're going. It is that easy. Yeah. That's why we preach that even those little kids can get saved. Amen. Right? I mean, if, as long as they know, you know, they're a sinner, right. right? On their yes. way to hell. I mean, they know good and evil. I mean, they accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they're saved. Nothing more to it. They don't have to come to church every Sunday to get saved. That's right. You don't have to go to church every Sunday to get saved. Right. God made it that easy. Then point number one, why is it that easy? Because it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. That's easy. You know, when some things are simple, it becomes very easy. Why do you think that, you know, those manuals, whatever manual it is, if it is for technology, if, whether it is for appliances, they want to make it as easy as possible? Even though it might be hard, you know, for non-experts, but why they try to make it as easy as possible, as simple as possible, so that people can understand easily? Yes. When it comes to salvation, it is easy because God made it very simple. Amen. What's the first condition? Know that you are a sinner on your way to hell. That's it. Yep. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There's none righteous, no, not one. That's right. In Romans chapter 3. Then the condition, first simple condition is that you're a sinner. Can anybody say I am not a sinner. You meet those crazy people here and there you know, when you try to witness. But if you, ever, if you have even a little bit of common sense, even a little bit of conscience, you know that you're a sinner. Right. I mean, have you ever lied before? Have you disobeyed your parents before? Right. Yeah. I mean, didn't you ever have dirty thoughts? Didn't you have you know, hateful yes. thoughts? Yes. You know, all the inside sins are sins as well. Amen. Then it's guaranteed 1,000% that you are a sinner. You have to understand that you're imperfect. Yes. And just because you see other Christians around you imperfect should stop you from getting saved. There was a story. You know, these two gentlemen was in a train, long train ride, and they're talking. And this is a gentleman, like, you know, I will never be a Christian. I never want to be a Christian. And these so-called Christians that I know, they lie, they steal, they cheat, they do everything. I don't want to be a Christian. And the other gentleman goes, yeah, I understand. You know, I'm on the fence. You know. I, mean, I see some good stuff, but I also see a lot of bad stuff. But across them, was a real Christian sitting in front of him. And then he asked the two gentlemen, oh, you know, sorry to overhear your conversation, but it sounds like you guys are talking about religion. And I mean, I agree, it's true that Christians, even myself, will do everything that non-Christians can do yes. and will do. Right. I'm imperfect. But can I ask you a question? 
The guy goes, sure, that's me. Can you find fault in me and your friend? Oh, yeah. But can you find any fault in Jesus Christ? Can you find any fault in Jesus Christ? And the guy was like, thinking very hard. And he wants to prove him wrong. He couldn't find any fault in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Christian man goes, that's your simple answer. You become Christian not because of people, but because of Jesus that's Christ. Yes. That's why the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Right. They didn't say believe on your friend, right. believe on your neighbor, yes. you know, believe all this you know, false preachers out there. No, the Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone, and thou shalt be saved. Praise the Lord. Isn't that so simple? Yeah. I mean, this salvation is so simple. And if you were to deny or reject it, don't blame it on the easiness of salvation. Blame it on your lust. Blame it on your love for the world. And blame it on your love for money. Right? Yes. Don't blame on the simplicity of God's salvation if you're not saved yet. Amen. Anybody can get saved. Yes. And you should get saved if you are not saved yet. Yeah. The condition is that know that you're a sinner and believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. If I were to put that in a manual, it's very easy to understand. I mean, that's how our, our tracks are made. You know, chick tracks, yes. church tracks. Yes, it's simple steps. Then, if you do agree with me that salvation is simple, very simple, then why do you not accept it? Sometimes, you know, it befuddles me where you explain everything to people when you're witnessing and they agree with everything and they say, no, I don't want to do it. Uh, it's okay. No, I'll think about it. How are you so different than Kenneth Clark? I'm sure he was moved by the church service. I'm sure he was moved by the message. But he was like, you know what, I'll just wait and see what it becomes of it. And then his final words are what? I was too deeply embedded in the world to change course. If you don't change right now, if you don't change your course right now, your course is straight down to hell, on your way to hell. If you don't change that course, you're going to end up there. Right. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Amen. The Bible does not say tomorrow is the day of salvation. The Bible doesn't even say tonight is the day of salvation. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. If Holy Spirit is convicting your heart right now, and you've already been thinking about it, then it's time for you to make that decision. It's time for you to be like, okay, I have been denying it. I have been rejecting it, but no more. I want to get saved. Amen. So simple. But however, you might fall into this category. Turn your Bibles to book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. That's why when it comes to salvation, we have to think of it in a simple term. Very simple. Very easy. If you start complicating it, you might end up like this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name the many wonderful works? Then, and then will I profess, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Many, many people complicate salvation and will end up in hell. Yes. They will start arguing with the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll be like, 
you know what? I believe in you, but also good works. I believe in you, but also speaking in tongues, also visions. I believe in you, but man, all those signs. You know, the Bible says signs are for truth. Amen. Right? Yes. No. I mean, are you a Jew in the first place? You're a Gentile. Right. And our salvation doctrine comes from, you know, important ones. All the IONs, IONs come from the book of Romans. And Romans are to Gentiles. Yes. Then Apostle Paul clear says getting saved is easy by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then why do you have to rely on anything other? That's right. Look at MacArthur. Look at all those false preachers. Salvation and also works. Yes. Then how do you know? It's just like saying this. I know I'm saved. This requires humility. Because I didn't do anything. I just trusted the finished work of Jesus Christ. I didn't do anything. That's right. You know, when you could admit that, that shows you humility. Amen. It's so simple. You know, can I save myself? Nope. Can anyone else save myself? No. Nope. Only Jesus Christ. That's right. Then, you know, you look kind of small, right? Yeah. You feel small. Amen. But that's true. Yes. In the sight of an almighty God, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, you, know, you and I are just tiny, tiny little things. Right. right? That shows humility. But MacArthur and other folks, I hope I'm saved. Maybe some of you guys are in that position. Yes. I hope I'm saved. What does that show? It shows that person is very proud. They're counting on their works to save them. Whenever someone says, I hope I'm saved, you're a proud person. Because you're relying on your works. You're relying on yourself right. to go to heaven. Right. With this day and age, with so many charismatics, wrong doctrines going on, people are saying, I have to do this and I have to do that to get saved. That tells me that you're a very proud person. Because you're trying to do something. You're going to earn your way to heaven. If you're a preacher... If you're a pastor, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if any of your friends or Bible scholars tell you that, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is not enough. You have to do other things. You follow them, then you end up in hell. That's right. Just like them. Simple. Oh. If you have any sense, you have to wake up. Amen. You have to wake up. And realize that salvation is easy because it's so simple. Amen. If the Lord wanted to make it so complicated, so hard, why did he have to die? Mm. He could have just told you and me to do this and that. Just like in the Old Testament. Oh, yes. You know, follow the commandments That's and the bad. laws. He didn't, I mean, he didn't have to die in that case. Right. But he did. Why? So that you and I can have this salvation, which is so easy and which is so simple. Amen. Then if you have been deceived, and if you have been on the fence, and if you really were confused, because I'll say confused, because too many things are out there, it makes you confused, right. then, you know, get rid of those rubbish. Get rid of those garbage and trash. Amen. And just trust what the Bible says. Yes. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. Don't believe people just putting one verse out of context. You know? If someone tells you you have to speak in tongues to get saved, right? you have to see Jesus Christ in right. your dreams to go to heaven. Then, okay. And they tell you, I believe every part of the Bible literally. Right? And, okay, then you, you must have some kind of a gift. Let me bring out a snake. <laughs> oh, it happened to Apostle Paul. Right. He was fine. 
Okay, so let's go to the zoo, or let's go somewhere where there's a lot of you know cobras or you know those venomous snakes. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have all my protection gear. No? I'll grab it and then give me your arms. I'm oh, better. Yeah, you give me your face. You know, let it bite your face, and then let's see what happens. Right? You yes. believe in tongues, you believe in vision, you believe in all the gift, and you know, you must have a, you know, all those like healings yeah. as well. Yeah. Because you go to places where you know, people punch their head you know, and right. come up there and then they think that they're you know, healed and stuff. Okay, let's do it. They're like, nah, uh, it's not like that, you know, it's not like that. Then why are you telling them that you believe in the, every whole Bible, right? You're not. You're a deceiver. Amen. You're a false preacher. Yes. That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. That's why there's dispensationalism. Amen. Then, when you understand that, everything becomes so simple. Right. And especially, you know, tying it back to salvation. Salvation is very simple. Yes. And then you're like, okay. You know, if, if, you have, if you're not saved, then, okay. Man, I understand now. I'm a sinner. Okay. I'm on my way to hell. Come on. I need a savior. And Jesus is that person, yes. and I want to trust him and get saved. Amen. Simple as that. And second point, what? is it that easy? Yes. Why? Because it's a sure thing. When something is sure thing, it makes it easy. How can you trust in your parents as a child? It's easy to trust them because it's a sure thing. I know my mom loves me. So it's easy for me to trust my mom's love. Husband and wives, I know it's easy because when we said till death do us part, you know, made it easy. I mean, process isn't the easiest part, but your love and trust should be easy. Why? Because it's simple. When it comes to salvation, it's easy because it's a sure thing. Because once you're saved, you're forever safe. Amen. Uh, you, you know, sometimes when we do witnessing, people always have a quizzical look. Once saved, always saved. No matter what I do right now, I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. I mean, if you were to talk to, like, say, you know, Catholic, you know, Seventh-day Adventist. Right like Jehovah's Witness, or anybody. They're like, they look at you funny. Right. Mormons. How do you know? Yeah. I mean, how do you know? Because the Bible says so. Amen. Simple as that yeah. and sure as that. I mean, Bible is the sure word of God. I mean, anybody who believes in the word of God, you believe every word. That's right. That's it. And Bible says, I could know for sure that I'm going to heaven. What more do I have to tell you? It's a sure thing. Amen. Anybody could try to you know, argue against the word of God, but it's not going to work with me because I know God's smarter than you. Amen. If God says, let's turn to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And, you know, 1 John chapter 5 have many verses. If you are already, or if you're doubting any part of your salvation, now go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Let's look at verse 12 and 13. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. Bible says, He that hath the Son has life, and he that hath not the Son of God has not life. I mean, do you have the Son? Yes. I mean, yes. Did you receive him in your eyes, your Lord and Savior? Amen. Bible says you have life. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Did you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. What does it say? That ye may know. I mean, Bible says it, not what I say it. Amen. Bible says that ye may know that ye have what? Eternal life. Amen. Wow, it's, it's, sometimes it's a chemical bomb to some people when they hear this. I mean, I could know where I'm going. That's what the Bible says, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen. I mean, the Bible says you could know for sure that 
you could go to heaven. It doesn't have to be a guessing game. It doesn't have to be, you know, I trusted Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I don't know what's going to happen if I don't live right. That's all because you don't have sure trust in the Word of God and in God. When I'm doing work, say I'm doing an assignment that you know, my company gives me, it becomes easy when I know the source is 100% correct. If I follow that source, then I know I'm going to succeed. Yes. When it comes to salvation, it's easy because it, you have the sure thing. You have the Word of God. Amen. If Word of God says you're saved, you're saved. Amen. I mean, what more do you need? Right. You don't need your feelings. That's right. Come on. Uh, forget about what your feeling says. Yes. So you had a horrible day the other day. You committed more sins than the usual, right? Yes. You lied more. You got angry more. You have more dirty thoughts. You, know, you, you, did, yes. you did more than the other days. And the devil tells you, you know what? You're not saved. How can a saved person can commit such a thing? But you go back to the Word of God. Yeah. Did I trust Christ as my Lord and Savior? Yes. Checkbox. Yes. Woo. What does the Bible say? I'm saved. Checkbox. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay, you could tell me that I'm going straight down to hell, but I can't. Because the Bible says I'm going to heaven. Woo. So if you ever have any doubts, about your salvation, go back to the Word of God. If, you, if someone ever tries to doubt you about your salvation, they're unbiblical, they're devil's child, yes. they're devil's worker, yes. then you say, you know what? That's not what my God says. Maybe your God says otherwise. Well, your God is the devil, so otherwise. That's why when you know that you have a sure thing, it makes it so much easier. And there's a slew of other verses. I mean, we'll look at a couple others, right? Let's go to the book of John. John. As a saved Christian, I mean, how much blessing and privilege is this? That we can know for sure where we're going after we die. There are millions, billions out there working their way, trying to get there, whatever religion they're in. And each day, if they have a bad heart, they're scared because after they take their last breath, they don't know where they're going to wake up. Right. But you and I have a sure word of God, and we know for sure. John 10, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10, 28. I mean, this is the Lord Jesus Christ we're talking about. Yes. The creator of the universe. Amen. Yes. And he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's it. What more do you need? I mean, it's easy. Yes. I mean, this salvation is so easy because I have a sure source. If you were ever, you know, doubting your salvation, you shouldn't have to. Tells me one thing, though, that you're far away from the Word of God. You're far away from living right. You're far away from relationship with Jesus Christ, close relationship. Worldliness can cause people to have lack of assurance of salvation. Spiritual drowsiness will cause you to doubt. So if you are not spiritually right, then obviously all this spiritual stuff, you'll start doubt. And it could go all the way up to salvation. And as a Bible believer, you shouldn't be in that place. If you are, you got to get right with the Lord. And you got to clean those things up. Salvation will make you think again, especially if you have been weary in your Christian walk, especially if devil and the world and the flesh has kept you down for so long, and especially when you have lost that joy 
of being saved. When you think about that salvation, he goes, man, I could have been burning in hell already, but because it was so easy and it was so simple and it was so, such a sure thing, and I can't go to heaven. With that mind, man, why would you worry about anything else? Because you keep on going back to the source who takes care of you, who provides all your need, and number one, who saved you from hell. Amen. Like, oh, wow, man, Lord Jesus Christ. That not only just salvation after death, I mean, he's the one who will provide salvation for every part of your life. Yes. Whether it's finances, whether it's relationship problems, whether it's your health problems, everything. He's a go-to person. Amen. Then you and I should realize, right, as a saved person, who's my go-to person for parts of every part of my salvation in daily walk? Is it Jesus Christ or is it someone else? Have you been relying on something else than other than Jesus Christ? Then you have to get right with the Lord. You've got to confess your sins and get back to him. Yes. Someone who gave his life for you, he knows what's best for you. And he wants what's best for you. You go to him first. We say it all the time. It's a rhetoric. But, you know, preachings are all practical stuff, things that you already know. You just have to put it in your behavior. Yes. And you've got to change your heart out of it. Amen. Then if you and I need to go back to him and get our relationship right, then that's something that we must do. Yes. Then we'll really, truly appreciate as a saved people my salvation. It's that easy. Amen. And if you're unsaved, you're like, wow, it's that easy. Why wait? Yes, right now. I need to get saved. Get saved. Yeah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God's salvation, plan of salvation is so easy. He made it easy because he knew we can't get our own salvation. We can't work for our salvation. That's why he died on the cross for all of our sins. If any who's listening don't know where you're going after you die. You don't have to be in that precarious, dangerous state. You can know for sure where you're going after you die. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. For the wages of sin is death. You must realize that you're a sinner on your way to hell. Because the Bible says, but the fear of an unbelieving, abominable, murdered, whoremonger, sources, idolaters, and all liars that's what the Bible says, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is second death. If you don't get saved, you'll burn in hell. However, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just realize you're a sinner on your way to hell. And turn from your ways and believe that Jesus Christ can save you from hell. With that change of mindset, you can get saved. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says not just some, not the ones that are speaking in tongues or seeing visions or doing good works. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're lost this morning, if you want to get saved, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Remember, prayer doesn't save you. It's your heart trust in Christ that will save you. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. With all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. 
Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart and trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. The Bible says that if thou, but as many as received him, John 1, 12, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. If you have Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. Wasn't that that simple? Yes. I mean, that's easy, easy stuff. I mean, you don't have to learn Ten Commandments. You don't have to learn all the heavy doctrines. You don't have to know about tribulation. You don't have to know about you know, anything. You just have to realize you're a sinner, trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have eternal life. You know, that's what the Bible says. If, if anybody ever doubts you, go back to the Word of God. Yes. Christian, if anybody ever doubts you, show him through the Word of God. Amen. This is what the Bible says. I hope that we, as Christians, don't forget this simple plan of God's salvation, this sure God's salvation. We shouldn't stop here. Then as Christians, you and I have to go out there to the lost world out there yes. and tell them how simple it is. You know, it's up to them to accept the easy salvation. But we, as Christians, just like Apostle Paul cried out loud to the Philippian jailer, you and I have to cry out loud to the lost who are out there. Sometimes the only way you could get their attention, right? You know, if you ever go to like some markets or you know, especially you know, swamis or you know, outdoor flea markets, right? People start yelling, hey, I have a great product here. <laughs> hey, I have this best deal here. That gets people's attention. When it comes to salvation, if you're witnessing, that's what you got to do. Yes. I mean, you have voice. God's giving you a voice. Amen. You know, don't be soft speaker when it comes to salvation and loud speaker for everything else. You got to be loud speaker for salvation. Yes. The rest of them is up to you. But when it comes to salvation, you got to be shouting. Stop. You know, there is a solution for you. There's easy. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to drown yourself in drugs, alcohol, you know, fornication, or anything. Right. There is a solution, and it's easy. And you have to shout for the Lord. Right. And then you truly understand. You truly appreciate. You truly be thankful with true humility. I know I'm saved. With that, let's all stand. Let's sing him and close. <laughs>